Hi everybody, welcome to this third video on the introduction to deep learning theory. At this third video, we're going to focus on the perceptron algorithm and on the sigmoid and softmax activation functions. The content of this video is based on the free course of Udacity, the intro to deep learning with PyTorch by Facebook Artificial Intelligence, the link of which you can find here. Now, let's start from where we left on the second video. As a fast recap on the second video, we uh, approached mathematically a model that we defined by this line that separates two sets of data that are labeled as accepted or rejected for students' entrance to a university based on the scores they had on the test and grades. However, even though we approach this mathematically, we took this line for granted. Now, the thing is, how can we find this line? Now, let's say we have six points, three blue and three red. Now, the machine doesn't really know where to start from, right? So it could uh, start with a random line. So let's start with a random line. So this line will separate our data set in two halves, the blue and the red half. And by looking at the screen, we can easily spot that we have four points which are doing good. They are classified correctly. But we see that we also have another two points that are misclassified. Now, what do these two points tell us? Well, to understand what these two points tell us, let's start with a fast quiz, right? Okay, so we have a red point in the blue area. Now, what does this point want the line to do? Does it want the line to get closer to it or go farther away? Well, I believe the answer is quite simple here. Of course, the point wants the line to get closer to it so that it is less misclassified or even eventually cover it so it goes on the red side of the fence. So now we know what uh, every point uh, every points tell us, right? We know that the uh, classified points uh, tell us nothing and that the misclassified points tell us come closer. So let's say that we manage to find a way to do this, right? So we will first get this line closer to the blue point. So we will get something like that. And then the blue point will say, wait, I'm good. Now the red point still says come closer, so we make another step and hopefully we get something like that so that all points now say I'm good, right? Okay, so let's start with a random line and our line here in terms of x and y axis would be 3x plus 4y minus 10. However, since we are talking on a neural network uh, perspective, uh, we have inputs. So we have our x1 input and x2 input. So instead of using x and y, we will say that our line is defined by 3x1 plus 4x2 minus 10. So here is the line. And this line now has cut everything in two halves. In the blue half, and in the red half. In the blue half is anything that is above zero. And in the red half is anything that this uh, function uh, calculates to be lower than zero. So now let's say that we have a red point in the blue area, a misclassified point, and it is this 4.5 uh, point. All right, so now we know from what we have already seen, that this point wants the line to get closer to it so it gets classified so, or that it's less misclassified, all right? So how would we do that? Now we know that we have 
the, co the, the uh, equation 3, 4, 10 for our points and bias, and we have the point 4.5. Now, let's add a 1 here so that we have an equal amount of uh, items in both our coordinates and our um, and our line definition in the in the function. So let's take the three, the four, and the ten from this line. And what should we do? We can subtract the four, the five, and the one. We can subtract them from the location three, four, ten. Now, this will give us a new line with equation minus 1, minus 1, 11, minus 11. And that would be minus 1, x1, uh, minus 1, x2, minus 11. But that new line would uh, move drastically close to the red point, so drastically that it, could, that it might even cover it directly. But such drastic move should make you speculate that isn't something very good. I mean, such a vast move could classify one point, but it could misclassify another hundred points. So, I mean, how can we approach this now? All right, so it turns out that the idea is good, but the approach is just a little bit brutal, right? So, we should lighten it a bit. So, now we will introduce what we call a learning rate. And by learning rate, what we mean? We will multiply the coordinates for 5 and the 1 for the bias by the learning rate. And thus, we will make less drastic movements. So, by doing that, we will end up subtracting 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.1 from the line function. So, our new line will now, in fact, be. 2.6x1 plus 3.5x2 minus 10.1. And right now, we have a new line that comes slightly closer to the point. Now, this is what happens when we have a, po a red point in the blue area. That is, if we have a point that uh, um, should be in the red area. Now, if we have the opposite, if we have a blue point in the red area, I mean, if we have a point that should be actually be in the positive uh, uh, side of the fence, while well, this should be on the negative side of the fence, so we subtract, right? What if we had the point that should be on the positive instead of the negative? So it should be here. Well, actually, we would do the same thing, but instead of subtracting, we would add, right? So here's our point. So we have a point 1.1 at location 1.1. We add another one for the uh, bias and multiply by the learning rate. So now instead of subtracting, we are adding. And now we have a new line 3.1x1 plus 4.1x2 minus 9.9. .9. Now, look at this. I will go back and forth between the two points. So you see from, uh, from uh, subtraction to uh, addition, subtraction, addition, all right? So you see how we change from one to the other. Now, we have everything that we need in order to get started uh, with our perception algorithm. Now, we have all the tools, right? So we know that for the perception algorithm, we start with random weights, okay, that define a random line. Now that we have the line, we will listen to our points. And for every misclassified point, what are we going to do? Well, if our prediction says zero, while well, it should be one. So if it should be on the positive side of the um, fence, we will change our weights by adding uh, to the learning, uh, by the learning rate, our coordinates of the point. And that should make the point, the, a new line that is closer to that point, as you see here, move like that. While, well, if our prediction was one and it should be zero, so if we have, uh, if we have predicted 
a point to be here but it's red so we want it to go on the red side well we will do the same thing but instead of adding we will subtract so now we will have the weight minus the point coordinates uh, times the learning rate and this should move our line as you see like that now we will keep repeating that so we can say do this let's say a hundred times and stop or do this a thousand times and stop, okay? So we can uh, do this until every point is uh, correctly classified and we end up with something like this, hopefully. Now, this might seem awesome, but there are certain flaws here. Let's say that we have two errors now, all right? and while we uh, adjust our weights with the perceptron algorithm, we get this line and we still have two errors. And we change it like that and we still have two errors and we change it like that and we still have two errors. The problem here is that we just hear how many errors we have, okay? And we just act accordingly based on uh, simply how many errors. We don't count how wrong we are. We just take into account that we have errors. So we could end up having a few uh, misclassified points that balance each other on uh, the adding and uh, um, on addition subtraction. So we could just do this forever if we are unlucky. Also, there is another problem. Look at this. Here we have zero errors, right? But we have a line that touches almost our red points okay but it's really touching them i mean look at all this distance we could have a point right here that should probably be red and it will be misclassified blue why because the points say nothing because the points are silent because they're correctly classified the same thing could happen if we were at the edges of the blue points here where we could have one blue point here that would be marked as red incorrectly. So we can spot it by eye that the correct line would be somewhere here, somewhere in the middle. That would be the ideal. But based on the perception algorithm, we cannot do that because all the points are happy the way they are. So now we need to uh, introduce some, some kind of error that will uh, touch both the correctly and incorrectly uh, classified points magnitude to how correct or incorrect they are so when we're talking about magnitudes look at this what we have seen so far was a discrete uh, kind of approach we see two errors and no matter where we turn there are still two errors while on the right side we see here at the mountain that um, we will try to take the way that we have a slight improvement over our error like for example here now how we get there all right now this introduces us to the need of some error function we need to have a way to know how good or how bad we are doing we don't just need to know that we have two misclassified points or 10 misclassified points or no misclassified points but how well how balanced are we uh based on our misclassified and classified points so how far are we from the ideal line now this is what the error function would do for us right so this is the usefulness of error function to let us know how bad we do now so far we know that for an incorrectly classified point we want the line to get closer but it turns out that we also know something about the correctly classified point we want them to get the line to get further away and let me go back a little bit into my slide here we try to keep the line as far away from the bl uh, blue area but together as far away as from the red area so it's like both 
uh, areas push each other so that we get a line like that all right so in order to achieve that we just don't need to know that we need to have uh, an incorrectly classified point wanting the line to come closer but once it is on the correct side it wants the line to get even further away so that it's more into the correct area now we are looking at some magnitude now that we didn't have before before we just had which side of the fence you are now we are looking at how far from the fence you are so now this is what the log loss error function will offer us so here we need to listen to every point as every point will contribute some error obviously some points will contribute more to the overall error than other points for example the misclassified blue point here will contribute much more error than the correctly classified red point in the red area equivalently the red point in the blue area compared to every other point and if i had a red point here where my pointer is it would contribute much less error compared to this red point that is further inside the red area so when we fix everything we will end up with something like this and we will manage to go down the mountain with the error so our new error now will be a sum of a smaller of uh, lesser errors so this is what we are after right so now based on this our predictions should go from a discrete to a more continuous uh, pattern right so instead of saying yes no yes i'm blue or no i'm not blue i should say i am 70 percent blue i'm 80 percent blue and so on so we go from yes no to likely now we look at this discrete versus continuous thing here we come from something that says i am on i believe i am one well i could be zero here okay to how likely i am what i am so instead of saying i'm blue and that's it i say i am 85 percent sure i'm blue since i am on the blue side of the fence and that deep inside it okay and by the way this is 085 because our values will be between 0 and 1 this 085 means 85 percent likely so since i'm deep inside the blue area i give myself a score of uh, 0 0.85 very close to one so that's 85 percent while here this says i'm 0.2 percent likely to be blue because i am too deep in the uh, red area and i'm very unlikely to be blue so that covers uh, the mistakes that we said in case a point is closer to the wrong area right so this point is unlikely to be uh blue but this is even more unlikely all right so that's the discrete versus continuous now in order to achieve that we don't need to uh, reinvent the wheel if you remember i told you about activation functions and i told you that we would separate at the first video i told you that we would separate uh the logic so, sorry in the second video i told you we would separate the logic uh of um whether a neuron fires or not from the summation and we will call this activation function now here is our activation function that we were using so far that uh, we had a w a y which is our prediction and our prediction was either zero or one and depending on the uh, x okay uh if our x was uh if our result from our equation was uh, negative it would always uh be zero and if it would get even slightly positive it would jump to one so this is what the activation function did for us the step function and they call it step function because it looks like the step of a stir of stairs right okay so this is what we had now now we will move to something more continuous from a discrete solution and we will introduce the sigmoid function which uh, is also between zero and one accordingly 
like the step function, we have the same zero and one, but instead, instead of having a, a step, we have a curve here. So if we are at, if the x is zero, our y will be 0 0.5. And for anything above zero on the x, our y will climb up a bit. And for anything below zero, our y will uh, go down a bit. So now we will have more, uh, we have, will have better predictions as we will now know that something is close to being accepted or rejecting or how close, okay? So this is the sigmoid function. Now, here we know that uh, for this point, this is 0.3%, 0.3, that is 30% likely to be blue and equivalently, it's 70% likely to be red, okay? So now anything that is that percentage blue is equivalently the opposite to be red. So here this point is 80% uh, chance to be blue because it is very deep in the blue area. So it's also equivalently 20% chance to be red. Now, here we have something very interesting. So far, we were looking at a student who got uh, uh, 7 out of 10 at the test and uh, 6 out of 10 in the grades. And by doing the addition on the examples, we uh, scored him that he had uh, a plus 2 score, if you remember, based on uh, the linear function that we had come up with. Now, we said that anyone who was uh, from zero and on, we would uh, mark him blue. But right now, we don't do that. This guy that is uh, that we found that he was uh, plus two, if we apply the sigmoid function on the number two, we will see that he has like 70% chance to, to uh, be accepted. And here is something very interesting. We said that no matter what, if you're, uh, from zero and on, greater than or equal to zero, you will be accepted, which is obviously wrong, okay? Because you're you're on the fence. You could like be or not be. As you see, anything that is zero based on the sigmoid function, the sigmoid function says that zero is 0 0.5. So it's our 50%. So it's 50-50 chance to be accepted or rejected if you have zero. So if you're on the line, so, as you see here, our 0 for the x gives us the 0 0.5 probability for y. Okay, you see it? That's it here. Now, so far in our perception, we used the step function and we simply stop using the step function and we replace it with the sigmoid function. And for the same inputs, the same weights, the same linear function, we change our decision making from a discrete yes, no based on the result to the sigmoid function that gives us percentages, how likely we are to get something. And this is now what the sigmoid function will do for us. And it will be used vastly in uh, machine learning and deep learning. Now, Let's look into a multi-class classification problem so that we talk about the softmax and uh, relate softmax to sigmoid. You will see that softmax is the same as sigmoid, but for more classes. Now, we said that in sigmoid, if we had a 70% chance to pass, we had also a 30% chance not to pass as they have to sum to one. So we had 0 0.7 equivalently not to pass was uh, 0 0.3. So they should sum up to one. The same thing happens for more classes. So uh, the softmax, which is the sigmoid for more classes, tells us that if um, from uh, getting a picture of an animal, we predict that it's more likely to be a duck, then 
this 0 0.67 plus 0 0.24 plus 0 0.09, they should sum up to 1. And that's the softmax, right? Now, in order to get there, we get from <clears throat> a number, right? Like we had a number to which we applied the um, uh, sigmoid and we got the percentages. <coughs> Here, accordingly, we will get to these percentages by values. So let's say that the value here was score two for the duck, one for the beaver, and zero for the walrus. How would we get from these scores to the percentages that the softmax would give us? Well, let's see into this classification problem. One way to approach it mathematically would be to add all the scores and divide our existing our existing score to the total scores and that would uh, that would be it i mean that, that that's the solution right now this is almost good but it's not very good because we might end up with negative numbers that's because uh we could possibly have negative scores and if we have negative scores we might end up with something like one plus zero plus minus one and that would make us divide by zero and we know very well that we cannot divide by zero so the idea is very good but we should somehow augment it so this doesn't work but as we said the idea is good so the augmentation is this We'll use a Euler number again. So now, instead of using uh, the numbers as they are, we use the powers of these numbers. So instead of saying 2 divided by 2 plus 1 plus 0, it would be e to the 2 divided by e to the 2 plus e to the 1 plus e to the 0. And that way, we have avoided the problem of zero divisions. and this will give us those percentages. So this is what the softmax is. And now let's put this all together. Here is the softmax. Okay, so for a linear function, we have the scores z1 to zn. This would be the prediction per class. So for, for e to the zi, which is uh, for every um, item in our prediction, it would be uh, the score of that item as the power of E divided to the sum of the every item power, uh, uh, in the power of E. And now let's um, compare this with a sigmoid function. And if you stand and see for a while, you will notice that the sigmoid is actually the same as the softmax if n is 2. So for two items, the softmax will give the same result as the sigmoid because the sigmoid is actually softmax for two items. I mean, if I pass by 70%, I will fail by 30%, right? So that's two items. So when n is 2, the softmax is the same as the sigmoid. So it's the sigmoid version for more classes. And that's multi-class classification. I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, I will be very happy to answer. And please leave your comments below. Thank you.